Hey friends, welcome to today's video. Today is going to be the greatest day of your life. You know, I, uh, I sent a text message out this morning. I wanted to share it with you. I sent it to the people who are important to me, who I happen to have in my phone. I did also share it on social media as well. And I said, I grew up without a father, so I had to pick my role models. And as an adopted child, without a male role model in the home, I struggled with self-identification. And not gender-based identification, but behavior-based. I would like to share this with you today. This man is one of my greatest heroes. Just thought I would share and the video that I attached to that text message that I sent out to friends today was when Mr. Rogers went to the Senate and got $20 million. It was the largest amount of money ever provided to public television. And he got that money from the Senate. They were going to cut the funds. And, uh, and he got $20 million from them like that. He's my hero. I think he was an amazing man. He worked with children. You can't say a bad thing about him, and there's no negative stories about him working with children. He was just a good man. I wanted to share with you today some of the quotes of, from him that I hold dear and I think are truly amazing. His words are timeless. They're incredible. And when he spoke to children, he spoke to them as if they were adults. It's truly amazing. Now keep in mind, each of these quotes that I'm going to share with you quickly is something that he had said to children themselves. I admire the way that he talked to kids. You see, kids have emotions, feelings, they process information just the way you do. They just do it with less experience. So that's the key. Remember when you're working with children or talking to your own children, that they feel, they think. They're not just kids with a lack of understanding. They lack experience, yet they still have the ability to fully express thoughts and opinions within themselves that are similar to the way that you do. Think about this. Um, Mr. Rogers said, I believe at the center of the universe there dwells a loving spirit who longs for all that's best in all of creation. A spirit who knows the great potential of each planet as well as each person. And little by little, will love us into being more than we ever dreamed possible. That loving spirit would rather die than give up on any one of us. He also said, You're a very special person. There is only one like you in the whole world. There's never been anyone exactly like you before, and there never will be again. Only you. And people can like you exactly as you are. It's true. I love that. How about this one? <laughs> I realize that it isn't very fashionable to talk about some things being holy. Nevertheless, if we ever want to rid ourselves of personal and corporate emptiness, brokenness, loneliness, and fear, we have to allow ourselves room for what we cannot see, hear, touch or control. He also said, there's a part of all of us that longs to know that even what's weakest about us is still redeemable and can ultimately count for something good. I like that. You see, Mr. Rogers, a lot of people, when they talk about Mr. Rogers' ministry, he was a religious man, but he never spoke about any specific religion because he didn't want to exclude anyone. So he just talked about the values that come from religion. I think that's a really cool thing about him. Um, another thing he said, there are times when explanations, no matter how reasonable, just don't seem to help. That's true. Um, he also said, it's very important, no matter what you may do professionally, to keep alive some of the healthiest interests of your youth. Children's play is not just kids' stuff. Children's play is rather the stuff of most future inventions. That's absolutely true. You know, take it from a guy who's had a stroke. I'll never mentally be greater than that of a 16-year-old boy. But I have the ability to garner the knowledge and the experience of a grown man. 
but I do understand approaching things from a childlike perspective. There are a lot of benefits to that. It's garnered me incredible success in this life. You know, he also said that we all have different gifts. So we all have different ways of saying to the world who we are. Um, he said, I can put on a hat or put on a coat or wear a pair of glasses or sail a boat. I can change all my names and find a place to hide. I can do most anything, but I'm still myself inside. I can go far away or dream of anything or wear a scary costume or act like a king. I can change all my names and find a place to hide. I can do almost anything, but I'm still myself. I'm still myself. I'm still myself inside. Yep. And he just wanted people to know that they're good enough. Even as adults, we need to be reminded regularly that we are good enough. That's very important. And you are. And I tr that's why one of the reasons why at the end of all my videos, I tell people, I believe in you. I care about you. And you are good enough because you are. And I do. Another thing that he said is a, a friend of mine was in a taxi in Washington, D.C., going slowly past the National Archives when he noticed the words on the cornerstone of the building, the past is prologue. He read them out loud to the taxi driver and said, what do you think that means? The past is prologue. And the taxi driver said, I think it means, man, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Isn't that true? We have so much potential and we have so far we can go in life. Nobody has seen exactly what it is we are about to become or what it is that our goals are going to bring into our life. We set our goals and we continue to walk in a path that will allow us to achieve them over and over again as we continue to build the great life that we deserve. He also said, I remember one of my seminary professors saying people who were able to appreciate others who looked for what was good and healthy and kind, were about as close to God as you can get, to the eternal good. And those people who were always looking for what was bad about themselves or others were really on the side of evil. That's what evil wants, he would say. Evil wants us to feel so terrible about who we are and who we know that we'll look with condemning eyes on anyone who happens to be with us at the moment. I encourage you to look for the good where you are and embrace it. It's really beautiful. Um, he also said, All we're ever asked to do in this life is to treat our neighbor, especially our neighbor who is in need, exactly as we would hope to be treated ourselves. That's ultimately our responsibility. Um, he said, the media shows the tiniest percentage of what people do. There are millions and millions of people doing wonderful things all over the world, and they're generally not the ones being touted in the news. And isn't that true? I love that. That's absolutely true. The media is showing us just a small piece of the greatness that resides on this planet. And we can help others and we can do the best that we can to be the best that we can be, right? I just love these quotes. I hope you're enjoying this because quotes like this can change not only your day, but they can change your life. Because you see, what you put in here is what you get out here. Absolutely 100% correct every single time for every single person. Um, he also said, deep within us is a spark of the divine just waiting to be used to light up a dark place. And I think that's true too. Um, he also said, most of us have so few moments like that in our lives. There's noise everywhere. There are some places we can't even escape it. Television and radio are probably the worst culprits. They are very seductive. It's so tempting for some people to turn on the television set or the radio when they first walk into a room or get in the car to fill any space with noise. 
I wonder what some people are afraid might happen in the silence. Some of us might have forgotten how, to nour how nourishing silence can be. That kind of solitude goes by many names. It may be called meditation or deep, re or deep relaxation, quiet time or downtime. In some circles, it may even be criticized as daydreaming. Whatever it's called, it's a time away from outside stimulation during which inner turbulence can settle and we have a chance to become more familiar with ourselves. God, that's, that's really good. I really like that. He also says, love and success, always in that order. It's that simple and that difficult. Truth, 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 truth. Um, he said, if we can allow ourselves to be gentle with others, no matter what our feelings may be, we have the chance of discovering the very deep roots of who we are. Um, he said, to get somewhere new, we may have to leave somewhere else behind. You know, and I say that too. I say, if you want to change your life, sometimes you have to change your life. If you want different results, do different things. Sometimes that means we don't go to the same places we've always gone to, right? We may go someplace new and try something different just so we can enhance our lives and, and change the outcomes that we're getting. If we're getting negative results, maybe by doing new things and going new places and with a new positive attitude, we can fill our lives with positivity and goodness, right? Absolutely. You know, he also said, one of our friends asked Fred about his thoughts on heaven when she was taking a walk with him on a Nantucket beach a few years ago. I'll bet there was a twinkle in his eye when he told her, oh, I think there will be a lot of people surprised to see who's there. Fred would never want anyone to think they might not be worthy enough of getting through heaven's gate. His God loved everyone just the way they were. My God does too. I absolutely believe in that 100%. Um, he said the toughest thing is to love somebody who has done something mean to you, especially when that somebody is yourself. Look inside yourself and find that loving part of you. Take good care of that part because it helps you love your neighbor. I'm going to get a little emotional here. These are all really powerful and amazing quotes. I just dig them. I wanted to share with you today some of these good words. I What happened was last night, my wife and I were watching YouTube videos when, when we had when we were using some of our our precious spare time. We, uh, we decided, let's look up some old Mr. Rogers stuff. And we watched an episode of Mr. Rogers. It was called Nighttime in the Neighborhood. And it was an episode of Mr. Rogers where... Um, he did the episode as if it was nighttime in, in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. It was a really good story, and we watched it intently, and it inspired me. And I thought, you know, tomorrow I'm going to do a video, as I do every day, and I'm going to share some Mr. Rogers' quotes. He's so inspiring, and I've thought that my entire life. I've always kind of thought, you know, what would people think of me if they knew one of my greatest mentors and heroes was a 1930s PBS TV star who worked with children. You know, there's a lot of thoughts about Mr. Rogers. Did you know Doug Vandergraaff thinks Mr. Rogers is inspiring and, and it's one of his heroes? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, Mr. Rogers is one of my heroes, and I have a ton of respect for anybody who says the same. You know, Mr. Rogers also said, When I was very young, most of my childhood heroes wore capes. But as I grew, my heroes changed so that now I can honestly say that anyone who does anything to help a child is a hero to me. I like that one. I just have two more, okay? Um, we, Mr. Rogers said, one of our chief jobs in life, it seems to me, is to realize how rare and valuable each one of us really is. That each one of us has something which no one else has or ever will have. Something inside which is unique to all time. That's absolutely true. 
Love that. It's so inspiring. One more. Um, where would any of us be without teachers, without people who have passion for their art or their science or their craft and love it right in front of us? What would any of us do without teachers passing on to us what they know is essential about life? You know, I believe that. I believe it so much that I'll be back tomorrow to share some interesting and amazing insights with you. I'm going to make some recommendations because I want to get you thinking. That's right. You know, when you get this machinery lubed up and you get it moving forward and you get it focused on a goal, a dream, or a desire, and you work through it in the right way and continue to functionally and actively move towards that goal, I'm going to tell you right now, you can have anything it is that you want. You're worth it. I believe in you, and I'm glad you're here with me today. Have a beautiful day, friends. I'll be back tomorrow with some really great stuff. Take care.